welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new to my channel welcome to medcode insight hi i am mushaba a certified medical coder in this video we will discuss fracture and dislocation an important topic of musculoskeletal system we will cover different types of fracture and their treatments as well as how to choose the correct code based on treatment along with guidelines and practice question to help you to easily grasp the concept let's get started A bone fracture is the medical definition for a broken bone. Open fracture also known as compound fracture is a fracture in which at least one end of the broken bone tears through the skin carries a high risk of infection. A closed fracture also known as simple fracture occurs when the bone is broken but the skin is intact. A displaced fracture means the pieces of the bone move so much that a gap is formed around the fracture when your bone broke. Non-displaced fracture are still broken bones, but the pieces didn't move far enough to be misaligned. There are three major approaches to treat fractures, closed treatment, open treatment, and percutaneous skeletal fixation. Closed treatment means the fracture bone is not exposed to the view of the surgeon. Closed treatment of a fracture or dislocation may be performed without manipulation like application of the cast, splint, or strapping, or with manipulation with skeletal traction and or with skin traction. Casting, splinting or strapping used solely to temporarily stabilize the fracture for patient comfort is not considered close treatment. Open treatment also known as open reduction and internal fixation means the bone is exposed by incision. It may be treated with intramedullary nail or other internal fixation device placed through a surgical exposure that is removed from the fracture site with or without direct visualization of the fracture site. In percutaneous skeletal fixation, treatment is neither open nor closed. In this procedure, the fracture fragments are not visualized, but fixation is placed across the fracture site, typically with imaging guidance. All services that appear in the musculoskeletal system section include the application and removal of the first cast, splint, or traction device when performed. When the provider treats the fracture and then places a cast, report only the CPT code for the fracture care. The application of the cast is inherent to the fracture treatment procedure code. Splice may be reported separately. If a cast is removed by someone other than the physician or other qualified healthcare professional who applied the cast, report a cast removal code. Subsequent replacement of cast, splint, or strapping and or traction device during or after the global period may be reported separately. A cast, splint, or strapping is not considered part of pre-operative care. Therefore, the use of modifier 56 for preoperative management only is not applicable. Code for obtaining autogenous bone graft, cartilage, tendon, facilitator graft, or other tissues through the separate incision are to be used only when the graft is not already listed as part of the basic procedure. Let's discuss some most common modifier used with fracture care codes. For subsequent redirection of a fracture or dislocation by the same physician or same qualified healthcare professional, append modifier 76 to the fracture or dislocation treatment code. If the person providing the initial treatment will not providing subsequent treatment, modifier 54 should be appended to the fracture or dislocation treatment codes. Add modifier 57 
to the evolution and management service to demonstrate that the decision for surgery was made at that encounter. Use modifier 52 for the re-implantation of incomplete amputation. Modifier RT is used for the right side and LT is used for the left side. Here are some ground rules for fracture care coding you must know before coding for fracture or dislocation. All services that appear in the musculoskeletal system section include the application and removal of the first cast, splint or traction device when performed. Fracture and dislocation treatment codes are categorized by the type of the treatment and the type of the stabilization. There is no coding correlation between the type of the fracture or dislocation and the type of the treatment. For example, a closed fracture may require an open treatment. If it is closed reduction or without any incision, without manipulation like application of cast, splint or strapping, with manipulation, with skeletal traction and or with skin traction, it is a closed treatment. If site is open surgically, open reduction treated with intramedullary nail or other internal fixation device, it is an open treatment. If fixation is placed across the fracture site, typically with imaging guidance, it is percutaneous skeletal fixation. If fracture treatment is not performed, report an evolution and management service code instead. A five-year-old male suffered a fracture after falling off the monkey bars at school. He fell on outstretched hand and suffered a transcondyle fracture of the left humerus. After prep and rip, a manipulation was done to achieve an atomic reduction. Once the joint was adequately reduced, skeletal traction was placed distally and proximally to maintain excellent fixation and anatomic reduction. The pins were bent, trimmed, and covered with a steroid dressing and a posterior splint was placed on the patient's arm. But CPT code is reported. Option A with the code 24516 along with modifier LT. Option B with the code 24530 along with modifier LT. Option C with the code 24535 along with modifier LT. Option D with the code 24538 along with modifier LT. When coding for fracture and dislocation, always remember fracture and dislocation treatment codes are categorized by the type of the treatment. So first we need to find the type of the treatment performed. In the given scenario for transcondyle fracture of the humerus, manipulation was done along with the skeletal traction. Means a closed treatment is done. Based on the type of the treatment, we first eliminate option A with code 24516 which is used for the treatment of the humeral shaft fracture with insertion of intramedullary implant which is used in case of open treatment. And option D with code 24538 which is used for the percutaneous skeletal fixation of the supracondyle or transcondyle humeral fracture. In the scenario where closed treatment involved manipulation we will also eliminate option B with code 24530 used for the closed treatment of the supracondyle or transcondyle without manipulation. So the correct option is option C with code 24535 used for closed treatment of supracondyle or transcondyle humor fracture with or without intracondyle extension with manipulation with or without skin or skeletal traction. A patient presented with a closed displayed supracondyle fracture of the left elbow. After conscious sedation, the upper extremity was trapped and closed reduction was performed, achieving anatomical reduction of the fracture. The elbow was then prepped and with the use of fluoroscopic guidance, two Kishner vials were directed crossing the fracture site and perching the medial cortex of the left distal humerus. Stable reduction was obtained 
with full flexion and extension. Kishner wire were bent and cut at 90 degree angle. Telfa padding and splint were applied. What safety codes is are reported? Option A with the code 24,535 along with modifier LT, 29,105 along with modifier LT. Option B with the code 24,582 along with modifier LT. Option C with the code 24,538 along with modifier LT. Option D with the code 24,566 along with modifier LT. 29,105 along with modifier LT. LT. In this scenario, a closed display supracondyle fracture was treated with a close reduction using fluoroscopic guidance. Two Kishner wires were directed across the fracture site. Since image guidance was used to place the Kishner wires, the fixation is considered percutaneous. After the procedure, a splint was applied for immobilization. In this case, we will eliminate option based on the type of the treatment and the guidance for the application of the splint along with the fracture treatment. First, we will eliminate option A and D with code 29105 used for the application of the splint. As application of the first cause splint or traction device is inherent to the fracture treatment procedure code. Both option B and C are used for percutaneous skeletal fixation. We will eliminate option based on the location of the fracture. Since the fracture is located in the supracondylar humerus, we will eliminate option B with code 24582 which is used for the percutaneous skeletal fixation of humeral condyle fracture. Our correct option is option C with code 24538 used for percutaneous skeletal fixation of supracondyle or transcondylar humeral fracture with or without intracondylar extension. Patient is seen in the hospital outpatient surgical area with a diagnosis of a displaced comminuted fracture of the lateral condyle right elbow. An open reduction internal fixation procedure was performed which included the following techniques. An incision was made in the area of the lateral epicondyle. This was carried through the subcutaneous tissue and the fracture site was easily exposed. Inspection revealed the fragments to be rotated in two places about 90 degrees. It was possible to manually reduce this quite easily and the manipulation resulted in an almost anatomic reduction. This was fixed with two pins driven across the humerus. The pins were cut off below the skin level. The wound was closed with plain catgut subcutaneously and five nylon for the skin. Dressing and a long arm cast were applied, which are the correct ICD 10 CM and CPT code assignments. Option A with the code 24579. 29,065 along with modifier 51. Option B with the code 24,577. Option C with the code 24,579. Option D with the code 24,575. In the given scenario, the patient has a displaced comminuted fracture of the lateral condyle of the right elbow. An open reduction internal fixation procedure was performed with an incision in the area of lateral epicondyle, indicating that the open treatment was carried out along with the application of a long arm cast. First, we will eliminate option A, which uses code 29065 for the application of a cast from the shoulder to hand as it is included in the fracture treatment code. We will also eliminate option B with code 24577 used for close treatment of the humeral condyle fracture. Both codes in option C and D are used for open treatment. So we will eliminate based on the location of the fracture. We will eliminate option D which uses code 24575 for the open treatment of the humeral epicondyle fracture. The correct option is option C with the code 24579 which is used for the open treatment of the humeral condyle fracture, medial or lateral, including internal fixation when performed.
A patient comes into his physician office with a prior diagnosis of colitis type distal radius fracture. He complains that the cast he currently has on is too tight and is causing numbness in his finger. The physician removes the cast and ensures the patient's circulation is intact. He then reapplies a short arm fiberglass cast and checks the patient's neurovascular status several times during the procedure. The patient is given instructions to follow up with his orthopedist within seven days. Option A with the code 25,600 along with modified 77. Option B with the code 29,705, 29,075. Option C with the code 25,600 along with modified 52. Option D with the code 29,075. In this scenario, the physician removes an existing cast and reapplies a short arm fiberglass cast. For selecting correct code, BUCPT guideline according to which all services appear in the musculoskeletal system section include the application and removal of first cast. Subsequent replacement of cast, splint, or strapping and attraction device during or after the global period may be reported separately. We first eliminate option A and C with code 25600 as the patient has already received the initial fracture treatment and only requires a new cost application. We will eliminate option B with code 29705 used for the removal of the full arm cost. So our correct option is option D with code 29075 which is used for the application of the cost elbow to finger. Thank you for watching. If you have any question or need for the clarification, please feel free to write in the comment section. For more detailed guidelines, CPC mock exam related questions and notes, email me at the giving email ID.